Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands, and sometimes in your bathtub. On September 28th, 2015, NASA had an incredible announcement for us. That liquid water exists on Mars. Awesome! And it was around that same time that these products that add pizzazz, relaxation, and fun to your bath time activities, called bath bombs, became a huge rage. What? The two sound pretty unrelated, right? Well, actually, the two questions, why is finding liquid water on Mars a big deal, and how do bath bombs work, actually have a very similar answer. So for today's Indie Lab, let's celebrate NASA's hard work and discovery by answering those two questions. And by the end, we'll have shown you a way to enhance bath time in such a relaxing and soothing fashion, Mark Watney himself would have traded many a potato for it. Let's kick things off with a demonstration. Check this out. Here we have two household chemicals, citric acid, used in canning, and baking soda, which has the chemical name sodium bicarbonate. And here the chemicals are again, citric acid, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Let's take some of that baking soda, and let's see what happens when we add some water. Um, nothing. The water just dissolves the baking soda, it doesn't react with it. Okay, let's do the same thing with the citric acid. Add some water, and the water's only dissolving it. No chemical reaction. Now let's take the baking soda, and let's mix it with some citric acid. Now, one's an acid and one's a base. We should get a neutralization reaction, but nothing's happening. What's going on here? Is chemistry broken? These things should be reacting, but they're not. Well, let's find out what happens when we add water. And remember, water doesn't react with either of these by themselves. We're getting a chemical reaction. Check out that bubbling. Pretty vigorous. The water isn't reacting with either chemical, but instead is dissolving the two chemicals and allowing them to react together. They have to be dissolved to react. So you see, there are just some chemical reactions that cannot happen without some type of liquid solvent keeping the chemicals in the dissolved phase. Back to Mars. For decades, we have known that Mars has water on it. That's no surprise. It's just our best evidence all suggested that it was locked in the frozen state and could not participate as a solvent for chemical reactions. But now that we have evidence that there are conditions on Mars that allow water to remain in the liquid state, well that opens up a whole new world of possible chemistry on that planet, including the potential for life. It may very well be that there's life on Mars right now. Now let's be clear, we're not talking Marvin the Martian or even something as complex as like a weird alien fish or a worm or something. If there are Martians, they're probably microscopic. Something similar, yet at the same time very different, to our Earth-like bacteria. Discovering such a life form would so completely expand our understanding of what life is. Up to this point, the only kind of life we've been able to study is Earthlings. For a very long time, we assumed that certain liquid environments here on Earth were just too hostile to support life. They were just too acidic, too dark, too cold, too salty, to support life. And every single time, when we've searched hard enough, we have been pleasantly proven wrong. Life was there waiting for us. Life forms that can thrive in what are traditionally considered hostile environments are called extremophiles. They love the extreme conditions. Earth has lots of them and it's quite possible that Mars has many of its own. I hope you're as excited about this as I am, and sometimes I might get so overexcited, I might need to relax a little bit about this. What better way than with a bath bomb, a Martian bath bomb? And when I use one, I think one of the most soothing and enjoyable parts of it is understanding the chemistry of how it works. Let's talk about materials. To make a bath bomb, Martian or otherwise, you're gonna need some citric acid and some baking soda. That provides the chemistry and the bubbling. You'll also need some cornstarch. That helps keep things fused together. A bath bomb just isn't a bath bomb without some type of scent. So you want some essential oil. I really thought hard about this. Like, what does Mars smell like? And they don't really have a rust scent essential oil. Not to say I've ever taken a breath on Mars and really know what it smells like anyway. So, gotta be honest here, I just went with a smell that I enjoy, clove. 
To make your bath bomb look quite Martian, you're going to want some food coloring. And then definitely an important piece of equipment for this is what are you actually going to use to shape your bath bomb? And for that, we're going to use these holiday ornaments snap together, do-it-yourself construction kit globe thingies. Hey, I don't know exactly what they're called, but they were only $1.79 around the holiday season. Of course, for this too, you're going to need some mixing bowls and some measuring cups. And hey, if you're making this for kids, or maybe just the kid inside of you, a couple of toys of the Martian variety might be a little bit of fun. You got all that? Let's enjoy some soothing science. Let's make a bath bomb. Now, how much of each ingredient you need is really determined by how large is your bath bomb going to be. For mine, each one of these half globes is a full cup. So I want eventually a two cup bath bomb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the amounts that would give me a perfectly two cup bath bomb and then add a little bit extra. So I'm going to start with one cup of baking soda. One cup. Next, for my citric acid, whatever volume of dry baking soda you've used, you want half that volume of dry citric acid. So for me, that's a half cup. Half cup of citric acid. Now since these are the two main ingredients for the chemical reaction, we're going to go ahead and stir these up so that way they're nice and close together. Next, cornstarch. And however much citric acid you used, that's the same dry volume of cornstarch you want. So for me, half a cup. Usually around the cornstarch is when things start to get messy. Now, mix some more. I can't stress this enough. The mixing is so important. I know it's tedious to try to get this all thoroughly mixed, but if you don't, that's why your bath bomb won't turn out as nice. Now once I've got it very thoroughly mixed, I'm going to transfer a good portion into this other container and I'm going to do our next part, moistening it. Now at this stage, some people say that with your water, you should mix in your essential oil and you should mix in your food coloring as well. I disagree. There's no advantage to doing that right now and I'd rather keep my spray bottle just having water in it. Plus, if we make any mistakes, we'll have wasted that food coloring and even more importantly, that essential oil. So what I want to do is slightly moisten my mixture here and get it to start to clump together. And you don't need much water. This is so important. You don't want to add too much water, trust me. If you do, your reaction is going to keep on going. That means less reaction for your bath bomb. And it also means that when you're trying to make your bath bomb in a sealed container, it's going to keep on releasing gas. It's not going to turn out well. So what I try to do as a general rule, about two sprays and then mix. So spray, spray, start to mix. Spray, spray, start to mix. It'll start to clump up, which is what our desired result is. We want it to be mostly dry, yet clumpy. After about several repetitions of this, it's going to start to clump on its own. Now, add a bit more of your dry ingredients. And more spraying and mixing. Do this until you've got all of your dry ingredients mixed up with the water. And I should be able to pick up some with my fork. That's a good test to know that you've got the right consistency. Also, listen to your mixture. You shouldn't hear hardly any bubbling. If you hear a lot, it's not ready yet. Let it kind of calm down. All right, now it's time for the food coloring and the oil. Portion some of your mixture back into your other bowl. It truly does not take much oil at all. Drip a little bit in, mix that up. Oh, smells nice. And now start to add your color. Get some yellow in there until we get that nice orange Martian color. See this consistency? This is what we want for our final product. Once you got your whole batch made, it's time to actually pack our bath bomb. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. As you pack it, you want it to be nice and tight in there. And if you've got the right consistency, it should pack easily. If you're going to do that little fun thing with the toy, scoop out a little place for him to sit. Push him in, cover him up. Now do the other half. Again, pack nice and firm. Next, assemble them. Push them together, 
There should be a little bit more packing space in there for you to do this. Now once you got it sealed, you might want some rubber bands just to hold everything in place. Your bath bomb has to sit. Overnight is a good idea. If you're really impatient and you want to use it tonight, you can stick it in the freezer for about half an hour. Either way, it has to start to firm up together. I'm going to let mine sit and we'll test it tomorrow. Now if you got some extra, something you can do is make a little mini sample and do a preliminary test. How well is this going to work? Oh yeah! Awesome! Okay, it's been one day. I let it sit overnight and now it's time to test it. Carefully remove your rubber bands and using a spoon Try to loosen it from the mold. Give it many taps. Not too shabby. What do you think? Kind of looks like Mars. All right, here we go. Commence the Martian bath bomb. Oh, doesn't that look soothing on any world, on any planet? It smells pretty good, too. I kind of want to eat it. I probably shouldn't do that. Mmm, soothing. Oh, look who we got. Hey, I hope you have success with your bath bomb, and I hope you're also very much enjoying this exciting celebration of NASA's discovery. Speaking of, now that we know that there's liquid water present on Mars, what do you think our next mission to Mars should be all about? Is it time to send humans there? How important is it to you to answer the question, are we alone in the universe? And if we're not, how do you think the discovery of Martian life would impact the world? How would such information change the way that we see ourselves and our place in the universe? To be honest, I think those kinds of questions are the most interesting ones that exist. Let us know your answers to any or all of those questions down in the comments below. Let's start the conversation. I really love hearing from viewers and what they think about things like this. And if you found this any labs exciting or soothing, give it that thumbs up like. It always helps and it's always appreciated. I'm Rich Lund, and as always, thanks for watching, and remember, science is all around us, even in the bathtub. Planet the red planet, I want to go to Mars, you know it ain't that far, the terraforming's got a star. Join this daring crew. As Martian invaders terraform in the layers, we need the devices to keep the life stable from oxygenators to water reclaimers. We have the technology. Why wait for later? We get out, most, bobos, demos, or bobos, hormones.